And this video is about how I took an image of a dog and uh, turned it into a photo stitch using the Premiere Plus 2 Ultra software. So, first thing you're going to do is go get grab your photo stitch module down here at the bottom. And first thing I'm going to do is a sepia. I like the sepia a whole lot because it always uses the same seven colors. And there's my little dog Bailey. And I'm not going to work with her today. So I'm going to take and scroll down to the dog I was using. Here is where you crop things if needed. You can do so accordingly. Um, I like to crop out so there's not a whole lot of background. And here is where you can actually remove the background. So you can take the large eraser and just go through and remove everything so it's just the dog left. Or you can flood fill if it is, um, you know, another color and you want to change the color um, that you can do. Here's your zoom tools. Here's your ruler to see what size you're dealing with. Here is your zoom to fit. And we're just going to say click next. Here is your saturation. If your color is uh, needs to be a little brighter as you turn it towards the right the color is going to get more saturated in this case i wanted to have a darker color for the dog if i don't like the darker color i just hit reset it's also got a red eye tool that you can use if needed here i'm going to say what my um, hoop size is going to be and I always do about uh, 20 megs um, 20 millimeters uh, less so I'm going to say I want to use the 240 for the width or 260 for the width so I'm going to put 240 in there and it's going to change the bottom number so it's proportional and it's going to say it's going to be a large photo stitch. I don't like doing small photo stitches. They just don't seem to turn out as well. And that's what the sepia would look like. And here are your colors. Remember, it's always the same colors. Your best brown, your dark brown, your chocolate wicker, um, mocha cream, cottage beige, and natural white. It's always those same seven colors. You always know what to expect. But if you don't want to do sepia because there is a lot of color or there's color that you really want, you can go back and do the photo stitch in color. So here's the colored picture again. I have altered it just a little bit, but I'll show you where I altered it. And next, and I don't usually do anything here. I like backgrounds on my picture, but I could totally remove the background so it only sews out the dog. And that's where I would do it right here. And with that, I would just use the erase tool. Here again, if I want more saturated color, I can move that saturation tool. I didn't have to mess with the red eye, so I won't. And again, I'm going to set it to 240 millimeters. And I cropped it a little differently, so the bottom number is changed. 
I'm going to say yes. And should be about, oh, this one was only 15 colors. The one I'm stitching out right now is um, 19 colors. And if you uh, want, you can also define the focal area, and that's just kind of put a oval around the face. And that's probably why I have more colors in mine, because I did that. And we're going to give it just a minute to spin. And here it is, the finished product. Um, density is one. I usually leave it there. And I'm going to say finish. I don't usually do enhanced detail. So there is my finished product. And if I need to change my hoop, I can do that. It looks like it's going to be bigger than my hoop. So I should have chose a little less number, but I'm just going to choose a little bigger hoop for now. I can resize that a little bit later so it fits the right hoop. And I'm going to go and use my zoom tool. First, I'm going to go to the picture tab. Right now we're in the stitch. I want to be in the picture tab. Okay, so that shows me the actual picture. Now, you can see where I've added a line here. I like to add a line to the edge of my fabric stitching order, whatever, so that it stands out more. So that the actual subject doesn't blend right into the background. To do that, what I typically do is I will zoom in to the part that I want to work with at the time and I will pick a color that I want to outline with. In this case it was probably something like this. If I wanted to pick, do white I'd click down here in the white. If I wanted to do a gray I get the dauber tool again and pick a gray. Okay, so that's how I do that. I change the color. I, you can also use the eraser tool here and the paint tool, which just fills the whole background with color, but that only works if it's all the same color. I'm going to choose the paintbrush. Here I have options. Now, as you can see, this picture is has pixels when I uh, blow it up. So I try to get the brush that's closest to what is there, and that's this brush. So the smallest one that's available. Right now, it's gonna paint with the gray. So I would just take and do that. And if I wanna change that color, as long as I've outlined with that whole, uh, the whole outline with that one color, I can go in and use my paint pail and my dauber, and now I'm going to get the paint pail again, and I can do that, and it changes the whole thing to whatever color I want it to be. So that is pretty much how I do the outlines, and I did the outline here. I added more black in here, and anytime like there's a lot of blue in here so what I did is I went and got the black something that's close to the color that I want to end up changing and then I get the paintbrush and I just start clicking and removing a lot of that blue So that's how I do that. And that, to me, was a game changer. The other thing, the dog's eyes, I did not like the original. 
the the white was too small and i figured that by the time i stitched it out it really wouldn't show so i went and got a color that was in the eye and you can also just change that color to white if you want whatever and then i grabbed my paintbrush and i added a little bit more to it so that the eyes would show up the white of the eye would show up a little bit better Down here, you can see where I outlined everything. Probably right in here to the original, I changed the color a little bit. So there was more just plain white so that I wouldn't have so many jump stitches. And once you get that the way you want it to be, because right now you're working with the picture. You're going to go up and do a save as. And I'm going to call this, just going to name it three. I put it in the picture folder in Premiere Plus 2. Um, sometimes I put it there. Sometimes I put it out on the desktop where it's just easier for me to remember where it is. I go to save and then I have to go back and open it up again. So we're going to say new color. I'm going to load that picture. And now I have to scroll down to my documents folder where I keep my Premiere Plus 2 stuff. And there's my three. I'm going to say next. And I'm going to say next. And just keep going. I don't have to mess with the saturation here because I've already messed with that once before. I'm going to do my picture at a let's say a 220 this time and we're going to say okay and the focal area is right here and I would just put that over the dog's face and say next. And most likely you will see if you if you uh, count your colors, see right now it's 21. It may go up after you've done the focal change. It's done spinning, so I go finish and we're good to go. So that's how you keep modifying that picture. You go into that picture tab and use your tools over here and make it the way that you want it to be. The other thing that I want to show you with this is that you go ahead and grab your picture, full color. We did that. I'm just going to go next, next, next because I want to show you something and I am going to change 220. Next. Okay. So, right now, see where it says Robus and Anton? I have my thread cache all built. So, there's my thread cache. And I can say I want it to only use my thread cache. And those are the colors that I already have. So, I can do that. And if I see a color that I really don't like in there, like I don't like that army green showing up. So I always change that to like a mineral or some other color. And if you click OK and watch the right picture, you can see how it changes it. And you say, oh, I don't like that. 
And I think I went down here and actually used Twilight for my color. And then I hit Next. And those are the colors that I'm going to use. Here's another DH green. And I think for this one, I did, I could probably use best brown, but I'm going to use black. I'm going to say next, and it's going to spin. And so that's how I use my thread cache so that I'm not going out and buying a whole lot of new colors. Um, but check it and make sure it looks like you want it to look. Um, and, and I love using thread cache. So go ahead and build your, your own thread cache someday. I think I have a video in how to do the thread cache if you look around in my YouTube. Okay, thanks. Bye.